After having worked with Scrivener for a while, you will notice that very quickly the number of the documents you have in your project will increase dramatically. Once you get used to using the power of this nonlinear way of creating and organizing things, you may end up creating lots and lots of files, which is fine, but there are some files that you will use more often than others, and you might keep going back to them over and over. So it might get quite annoying if you have to go look for these files every time you need them. You could save a lot of time if you had them in a more accessible place, right? That's exactly what bookmarks are for. I'm sure you're familiar with the term bookmarking from other applications, like for example, your internet browser. It basically means having an easily accessible place where you can store links to your most important Scrivener documents. But apart from its own documents inside the project, Scrivener can also bookmark web pages or files outside the project. Let's look at how it works. To get to the bookmark options, open the bookmark panel in the inspector. In case the inspector is not open, click the I button in the toolbar. The bookmark panel is the second tab in the inspector. At the top of the bookmark panel, you have a drop-down menu selection where you can choose between document bookmarks, project bookmarks, and matching text. We will look at the matching text function last, so let's look at the bookmarking features first. Let's choose project bookmarks for now. Just right from this drop-down menu, you see this gear icon. If you click it, you get three choices to add bookmarks. The first one lets you bookmark internal documents, that is, documents that are stored inside your project. When you hover over Add Internal Bookmark in this menu, you see that a submenu opens up that shows you the documents that you have in your binder. And if you hover now over a folder in the binder, this will show you the subdocuments of that folder and so on. So just choose one of your binder documents to see what happens. When you add any of the internal documents here, you will see that document in the field below. And if you click on it, it will show you the content which is editable in this window, by the way. So you will be able to access that document from here directly. And from here, you could drag that document to an editor window, for example. If you take that document with your mouse and you click drag it to the title bar of the editor, it will open up there. But there is an even simpler way to access your bookmarks. If you take a closer look at the toolbar, you see there is a bookmark button. If you click it, a menu opens and you see your bookmark documents there directly. Now you can access them there directly and depending on if you click once or twice on one of them, they will either open in the active editor window or in a so-called quick reference panel. If you don't know what quick reference panels are, don't worry, they're basically just another additional editor window that you can open and that is a floating window. It's a bit like opening additional editors in extra windows so you can move them around any way you like. If we go back to the gear icon menu for a second in the bookmarks panel in the inspector, if you have one of the bookmarks selected and you click that gear icon menu, now you see a whole bunch of options with other places where you can open that bookmark apart from the ones just mentioned. As for the other types of bookmarks you can have, they work the same way basically, just that you don't choose an internal document from the menu list, but you enter the URL or pick and choose the external file that you want to bookmark. To bookmark URLs, choose Add External Bookmark and just enter the title and the URL in the box that opens up. If you want to bookmark external files that are stored on your computer hard drive, select Add External File Bookmark and choose the file from the location where it is stored. If you want to delete a bookmark, just select it and then click the minus button at the top right of the bookmarks panel. All right, now that you know how to handle and use project bookmarks, the concept of document bookmarks will be pretty obvious to you. The way they work is the same as with project bookmarks, just that they are not stored globally for the whole Scrivener project, but with each of the documents. 
That means you can add additional internal or external files or links to each of your binder items. This, for example, among other things, gives you the option to have more than one notepad for each of your document. You might be familiar with the notes section in the first tab of the inspector. This is a place that holds notes related to that binder item. If that is not enough, and you need additional notepads or note space, so to speak, you could just create an area in your binder where you put them, a notes folder, for example, or sub documents below the one that you want to create those notepad documents for, and then just bookmark those as document bookmarks. So if you select that document in the binder or have it active in the editor, you can go to the bookmarks tab in the inspector and easily access all your additional note documents, no matter where they are stored in the binder or even outside of this Scrivener project. Okay, one more thing that you can do here in the bookmarks tab in the inspector. If you select matching text from the drop down menu above, probably at first you will see nothing. It might just say no selection or something like that. In case that happens, just make one of the binder items active by selecting a document in the binder or clicking inside an editor window and Scrivener will then start to check other documents in your project to see if parts of the text are similar to the one you just selected. Pretty cool, huh? If it shows you a green equal sign, that means that you have duplicate documents. So if your project starts to grow and maybe you're using a project file over several years and keep adding and adding and editing stuff, this is a pretty useful feature to check one document against all the others.